this guy, the F-22 fighter jet, the Raptor, they call it. Just as an aside, Ford also calls its awesome new off-road ready pickup the Raptor, maybe because they had some inkling that the F-22 airplane wasn't going to be monopolizing that nickname anymore. That's because the F-22 Raptor is now dead. There are still F-22s in America's armamentarium, but we are not building any more of them than were already in the works. That was announced today by the president, after months of foreshadowing by the Pentagon and the president himself. In the end, the F-22 became the mother of all spending disasters. Maybe not the mother, but at least one of the, patri uh, one of the members of the family matriarchy. The average cost of every F-22 is now $356 million per plane. $356 million per plane. And these planes are kind of a disaster. According to Pentagon test results leaked to the Washington Post this year, for every hour that an F-22 is in flight, it requires more than 30 hours of maintenance. On average, the plane reportedly suffers a critical failure after every 1.7 hours in the air. One former Lockheed engineer told the Post that the skin's radar-absorbing super high-tech skin also has what's described as a, quote, vulnerability to rain. Think Wicked Witch of the West and Dorothy throwing water on her, right? The F-22 also has the handy feature of being technologically incapable of communicating with any other warplanes. So the pilots of an F-22 are completely isolated from any other U.S. aircraft in the skies. They can't hear them or talk to them. One consequence of the political trick of building parts for this thing in more than 40 states is that there are also huge quality control issues that become evident when you try to piece all those parts built all around the country together into one plane. Pierre Spray, a weapons designer and longtime critic of the F-22, told MSNBC Today that even now, in 2009, parts that don't work are being retooled and refit individually by hand on the final assembly line as F-22s are being built. How efficient. No F-22 F has ever flown a mission in Iraq or in Afghanistan. Its armor is so light it can't withstand even small arms fire. So it can't fly anywhere where it has to fly low. And did I mention they cost $356 million each? To kill the zombie F-22. And today, it finally died. And America's longtime textbook case study of stupid stuff on which we spend billions, even though we know it's stupid, has a surprise ending. latest, the cutting edge in uh, weaponry, air-to-air -air weapons, air-to-ground weapons. It's also got the latest in stealth technology to make it nearly invisible on radar. This is designed to replace the current crop of aging MiG-29 aircraft that the uh, Russian Air Force has currently in its fleet. And uh, the uh, latest prototype here is uh, expected to be available uh, for uh, national militaries to buy it during the 2015 2017 year. This has a future in store so far, at least, with the Russian and Indian Air Forces. Uh, the program cost between $8 billion and $10 billion to uh, research and develop and then actually create these aircraft. Uh, they cost about $100 million each. The Russian Air Force is on track to buy between 150 and 200 of them, and the Indian Air Force is on track to purchase about 200 of them for their uh, air forces. Uh, this is something that has the potential to give good defense, according to analysts, at a very reasonable price. When we would be offering it on the international arms market, I think by definition 
this aircraft will be able to occupy up to one third of the market. I think that some countries will buy it uh, uh, for economical reasons, because Russian fifth generation would be much cheaper than the United States. And now this video we've got of the plane taking off and landing is actually the first look of the jet itself. Uh, this is something that's been shrouded in mystery. The Sukhoi Corporation has been really keeping this under wraps. So this is something that's an exciting prospect for the latest cutting-edge Air Force weaponry looking into the future. Еще большим восторгом продолжал американец. Содержание этой книги становится самой популярной темой для обсуждения. Каждый, кто имеет возможность изучить ее, проявляет бури эмоций. О мой бог! Да это как раз то, что нам нужно для дизайна самолетов невидимых. Передо мной будто отворилась дверь, и я увидел свет. Используя полученные математические расчеты, можно было приступать к проектированию самолета невидимки. Вот тогда нам стало понятно, что мы отстаем от СССР на 15, может даже на 20 лет. Ведь эта книга вышла еще в 62 году, за 10 лет до того, как она попала к нам. Ведь я служил в разведке, и я постоянно задавался вопросом, на каком этапе в этот момент были русские. Самым главным для нас было не отстать от Советского Союза, чтобы у него не было преимущества перед нами. Скрытным он оказывается и для общественности. Создание стелса становится одной из самых засекреченных разработок Пентагона. Главным секретом становится форма будущей невидимки. Форма, реализованная в архитектуре самолета, обеспечит до 90% снижения эффективной площади рассеивания. Происходит это за счет отражения поверхностями планера радиолокационных лучей вверх и вниз. Для этого большинство поверхностей наклонено под углом более 30 градусов от вертикали. В итоге эффективная площадь рассеивания этого самолета будет снижена в десятки раз. Наконец-то, спустя годы неудач и разочарований, таким образом, в декабре 1978 года, под личным контролем президента США, запускается полномасштабная программа производства самолетов невидимок. Скоро американцы столкнулись с неожиданным препятствием. Когда ведущему аэродинамику отделения Дику Кентрелу впервые показали желаемую конфигурацию будущего стелса, того хватил удар.